In this video, I will show you how to create an Angular project that supports lazy loading by organizing the application in features, shared and core modules. As you will know, Angular has a really powerful and flexible router, and we can easily make sure that the component is loaded to a specific path. But in this scenario, everything is loaded in the main bundle, and consequently the application will not scale, and the startup time will be slower and slower as new features are added to the project. To fix this problem, app module should remain as clean as possible, and it should not have relationships with other parts of the application. Furthermore, we should load the portion of JavaScript necessary for each page only where really required. And for this purpose, there will be some useful features like dynamic imports and lazy loading. The simplest strategy to enable lazy loading in an Angular application is to organize it in several modules, one for each root, which will contain everything it needs to work. This will ensure that Angular and Webpack are able to split the application into several chunks and load a specific module only when required by using dynamic imports. Each module must define components, directives and pipes that it needs in the declaration property of its decorator, but this creates a problem where we need to use the same component on multiple modules, such as a reusable component like panel, tabbar and so on. But why? Simply because a component can be defined in the declaration of only one module for an application, and consequently, if we try to declare a component in two or more modules, we will receive an exception. To solve the problem, we have to create a shared module in which we will define components, directives and pipes that we want to share, so the module that requires them can now import the shared module instead of the individual components. However, some components are used only once in the application, such as a navigation bar, so we will also see how to split the application in domain modules in order to organize them. First, we create an Angular project with Angular CLI and a setting line style in line template and disable testing in order to have a clean project with few files. I also set a custom prefix and I use FB since my name is Fabio Biondi. I open the project in my editor and the first step I usually do is to create the shared module with the command and ggenerate module shared. Let's now create some demo components and I also use the flat option to avoid that the folder is created for each component in order to keep the project as simple as possible. As you can see, when we generate components with the CLI, they are automatically added to the nearest module, in this case the shared module. However, since each module is completely isolated from the rest of the application, it is essential that the components or any directives are also defined in the exports property of the shared module, to make them usable by other modules. We can also automate the process by using the export parameter when we created the new component, and of course we can also create directives and pipes in the same way. Now, let's create a feature module. This command allows us to create a new module and defines the path of the root. As you can see, this command has generated a new folder that contains the module, a component and a routing module that defines the default component to show when the module is loaded. The previous command also added a new rule to lazy load the module with a specific path by using dynamic imports. Now I can create other two feature modules and I add some buttons in the app component to enable navigation between them. We can now try the application and we see that the router works as expected. And the network console is very useful to verify that modules are loaded by using lazy loading. Anyway, when we try to use the shared component in the home component, we see that these components are not recognized. Why? Because we still have to import the shared module in home module to make them available. As you can see, components are not visible if I try to remove the shared module from the import, or if I remove components from the exports property of the shared module. We can now try the app again, and it works. Let's go into app component and move the navigation bar to a dedicated component. We could create it in app module, but usually I prefer to create a dedicated module for everything that is used only once in the project. Usually, the name I use is core module. And now I create the navigation bar component always using the flat and exports parameters. 
We can now open the navbar component and move the template of the navigation bar inside it. But when I try to use the new component, I can see an error directly in my editor and in fact it doesn't work. The first fix we need to do is to import the core module into app module to make navbar visible. And now it works. More or less, because now you cannot click anymore on the buttons to change the page. In fact, the router link directive is no longer visible since this directive is included in router module that is not imported in core module. So we can fix the problem importing router module and the application works again. And that's all, but we just want to add a default path to the router rules to complete this exercise. Since the path is an empty string, we have to use the path match full option to make sure that this rule is handled only when the path is exactly the default URL. And now our demo is really completed. Of course, there are other interesting concepts that we could depend, on, such as the management of submodules and nested routes, the possibility of creating widget and service modules, or some insights about the dependency injection engine and its relations with modules. Let me know if you are interested in learning more about these topics, write in a comment and don't forget to subscribe my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.